Dear students, let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 21st April 2016. The first article is related to the Dr. B. R. Ambedkar's legacy. Now, both the left and right, they want to claim the legacy of the Ambedkar. So, in this context, let's analyze um, historically how these uh, elements fought with the Ambedkar. Now, when uh, India became independent, um, Hindu court bill was the first controversy that shook the parliament. Under this Hindu court bill, certain restrictions or certain characters on the marriage are being imposed and transfer of property and marriage in, among Hindus were being imposed. Now, the Janasang of those days, especially the Shyam Prasad Mukherjee, they have opposed this particular Hindu court bill saying that, why only a court bill for Hindus? Why the government is interfering with Hindus and why is it distracting their traditional laws based on Manusmruti and others? So, what they said is, in Hindus, among Hindus, marriage is more a sanskar, an order, rather than a contract. So, the western ideas of marriage, gender equality, etc. cannot be made inbuilt into the Indian laws. So, this is what is their line of argument. So, on the other hand, the same Manuspruti which right wing has supported also gives precedence to the caste and caste hierarchy. So, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, he is the ardent supporter of the Hindu court bill and he has replied that the time did not mature to bring in the uniform civil code. Other than that, the situation is very much necessary, demands for an equal treatment of all the citizens among the Hindus. Today, whatever the inheritance rights for the woman, divorce, choice of marriage, all these are due to the legacy of the same Hindu court bill. So, it means the Hindu, the right wing of the politics and Ambedkar, they are squarely at opposite to each other. And coming to the uh, left wing, the Ambedkar he spoke about inhalation of caste, but left wing Though now it is trying to bring Ambedkar's views on workers, Marxism, etc. Uh, towards, uh, I mean, uh, present day thoughts. In reality, the left never agreed for the caste. They only taken forward the class conflict in the country. So the caste and class conflicts overlapping with each other in Indian society was never in the thoughts of the left. So, but however, Ambedkar was always preoccupied uh, with eliminating the caste from the society. So, today, appropriating the Ambedkar legacy mostly exists um, on a poll criteria. It is just electoral posturing and symbolism. It is raising his uh, visibility, but following his policies and ideas by the government of the day is still doubtful. And coming to the the provident fund reforms now these are happened or the government wanted to bring them in two sets during the budgetary speech the finance minister said the provident fund withdrawal 60 percent of the withdrawals will be subjected to tax and after that as repulsion increased from the middle class then finance minister withdrew those now, the Labour Ministry wanted to bring in some changes related to the Provident Fund. What it said is, no person can withdraw the money for before 58 years of age. The retirement age is from 54 to 58 years increased. Next is, some restrictions are being imposed for withdrawal of the funds in between while changing the jobs. So, in this context... The social security benefits which are available in the country are very minimal. And the amount of the population getting impacted with the provident fund is also very less. The reason is most of the employment in India is in the unorganized sector. Government instead of focusing on restricting the, the small sector, so it has to focus on giving the social security benefits to the many people lying outside Added to that, this to and fro motion by the government uh, weakens the so-called authority of the state. And coming to India-USA, the defense relationship. So in this case, already we saw this. 
The United States Secretary of Defense, Mr. Aston Carter, visited India and he clearly said it is the defining partnership for 21st century. Though there is a lot of activity happening, but in real project movement, uh, there is no much progress. Though both the countries want for joint development, during President Obama visit, almost four plus projects are signed for joint development. There is very little progress on two of them, and two of them are totally shelved. So these include the next generation protective ensemble, and what is the purpose of this? It is a suit for the soldiers, wearing suit for the soldiers uh, to withstand the chemical attack, etc. And mobile electric hybrid power sources, and then micro drones, and kits for the C-130J Hercules. So all these things are not being taken forward. And India's offset clauses are also very much inconvenient to the United States of America. But not everything is dark over there. There are something which is very positive. Now, United States has established um, India's rapid reaction cell. So it is the only country-specific cell established in the I mean, U.S. Defense Department. And the second is, um, U.S. Congress introduced a resolution that is called India Defense Technology and Partnership Act. So, India Defense Technology and Partnership Act, what it says is, um, with regard to the technology transfer in defense, India will be treated along with the NATO allies of the United States of America. The third is maritime cooperation. President Obama and Prime Minister Modi has clearly stated, uh, for freedom of navigation and overflight uh, across the great oceans, uh, including South China Sea. Added to that, um, the participation in naval exercises, that is RIMPAC exercises, uh, data sharing on the movement of the commercial ships. Um, so these are also underway. Already the naval exercises are being taken up every year. So there are certain positive things, but still there is a long way to go. Coming to the manual scavenging. Now in 2013, there is a law that is... Prohibition of Employment of Manual Scavengers and the Rehabilitation Act 2013. So what this law states is, no person shall have a pit latrine and a manual scavenger. But however, it is being violated mostly by the government itself. Railways is the governmental department which holds the highest number of the manual scavengers. So in this context, the manual scavengers is also related with the caste. Most of them are from scheduled caste. So, the caste inhalation, if it has to happen, these caste-based derogatory jobs have to be uh, removed and the state has to fight with it. The Supreme Court also has clearly stated that uh, the manual scavenging is against the principles of equality and human dignity. And prior Mahatma Gandhi has clearly stated it's a national shame. Now, coming to the climate change and the heat wave. So, as the heat wave is everywhere, if we observe in the Paris, almost 2,000 plus lives are saved with the early warning systems. In India, early warning systems exist for, uh, uh, I mean, floods. But however, there is no such an early warning system exists for the heat waves. So, scaling up the heat and health warning system is an important factor. And next is, we have the National Action Plan on Climate Change. A due emphasis has to be added for heat waves into that. And then, adequate supply of drinking water in accessible positions for the people. So, and power is also very critical to cool off. So, adequate and reliable supply of the power for the people, these are the things which are suggested. And next is, the President's uh, rule, let's come to the news of today. Article 356 of the Constitution, uh, what it talks about. Or else let us see, what is the Supreme Court judgment uh, in SR my case with regard to the judicial review of imposition of Article 356. So according to section, uh, Article 74 sub clause 2, the courts are barred from inquiring what the advice Council of Ministers gave to the President of India. 
So in SR Bombay case, Supreme Court has clarified that um, what the advice was tendered by the ministers to the president is out of judicial review. But however, on what material such an advice was based on cannot escape the judicial scrutiny. So there is a distinction made between the advice tendered and materials upon which this advice is tendered. So this has to be solved. So in this case, the High Court of Uttarakhand has clearly stated that the President of India can go wrong. So is, uh, the President's decision is open for the judicial review. And coming to the coral reefs, the coral reefs they consist of a photosynthetic algae inside which gives them their color. So whenever a stress occurs on the corals, their defense mechanism is to throw this photosynthetic algae outside. So when ocean temperatures are raising, so they throw this uh, algae and that they become uh, white. This is what is described as the coral bleaching. And the next article is related to gender equality. So the Delhi High Court uh, last year uh, in 2015 October has clearly said that uh, not giving access to the women for permanent commission is uh, against to the gender equality. So in this context, the Navy is not providing for that. Uh, and today, Navy, in a step towards the gender equality, allowed women for permanent commission. And coming to the GID maps, so the Global Integrated Drought Monitoring and Prediction Systems, these are called GID maps. So these GID maps, what they show is, the drought is not a phenomenon restricted to the Indian subcontinent. It is more of a global phenomenon being worse in Latin America. And coming to the M.G. Narega, Jayati Ghosh article. So what she says is, whenever there is a drought, so the public works, they provide for the necessary relief to the poor. So the M.G. Narega is one such law. Recently, government has raised the total number of employable days to 150 in the drought areas. So, the major weakness is this. The government, though raised its uh, the scope, it is not releasing the funds to the states in time, which is weakening the implementation of MG Narega, which has to be the need of the hour, as India is uh, prone to the drought. And next is uh, the spurious solution with regard to the alcohol, prohibition of the alcohol as a populistic measure which is going on with regard to the Kerala, Tamil Nadu in every election. Let us see how far it is practicable. So, as of now, wherever the prohibition implemented, it led to the increase in the cost of the alcohol and then rise of the spurious consumption. So, in this case, uh, instead of prohibition is impractical. So, what we have to do instead of prohibition is... Um, developing or promoting abstain, abs, abstaining from the alcohol consumption by Alcoholic Anonymous and other institutional measures. So just prohibition is impractical and it's a shortcut. Already what are the effects of alcoholism? These have been discussed to you in the previous day's articles. And already Ramchandra Guha's article I have discussed to you with regard to Ambedkar's legacy. The pension reforms are also discussed to you. These are the articles for today. Let's take a quick revision. Ambedkar legacy, ideological thinking. So the left and right wants to claim the Ambedkar legacy, but historically none of them are in line with the Ambedkar views and thoughts. And the next is Indian economy, the provident fund changes. So what is the conclusion we said is, the government's to and fro motion will weaken its stand and authority. And the second is, the government has to take a consensus basis before making such a decision. And the next is, with regard to India-US, though many of the promises are being made, there is no concrete action visible on the ground with regard to India-US defense relationship. But however, on few fronts such as maritime cooperation and also amendment of the few laws uh, uh, which makes the India to be treated on uh, par with the NATO allies with regard to technology transfer and India rapid reaction cell are the few positive developments. And manual scavengers, um, the government is still the largest employer, so government has to respect its own law. And climate change, um, 
the heat wave and the real uh, early awareness towards the heat wave uh, and availability of the drinking water in the closed points. Um, these are the few recommendations made. Article 356. Um, so though, as for SR Bombay case, what the advice rendered by the Council of Ministers to the President is not subjected to judicial review. And what material facts they rendered the advice that can be subjected to the judicial review. And coral bleaching. So 93% of the uh, Great Barrier Reef is subjected to the bleaching due to the changes in the ocean temperature due to El Nino phenomenon. So coral bleaching refers to the whitening of the coral reefs uh, due to outthrowing of the photosynthetic algae. And the next is a woman gender equality. So Navi has allowed them for the permanent commission. The press freedom index, um, which is given by the uh, uh, journalists without borders. Uh, so according to this, our uh, reporters without borders, according to this, uh, India is placed among 133 rank on 180 countries. The poor performance of India has been reflected due to the attacks on the journalists. And uh, coming to the Indian Express liquor prohibition, the conclusion which we said is prohibition is impractical. So we have to promote the institutional mechanisms to stop people getting addicted to the liquor. And next is Naxalism. So most of the governments, they don't agree that uh, they fail to instill a sense of justice among the tribal people. So if the state is uh, can able to prove itself to the protector of their interests, uh, then automatically the Maoist influence will be out over there. And withdrawing the lifeline. So with regard to mitigation during drought, um, the MG Narega is a critical factor. But however, the government not supplying the funds is weakening the program. These are the important articles for today. Thank you very much.